Yay. Attitude. Attitude is something that distinguish people from uh, other people. Because uh, what we've learned through time and space is between the very poor, hopelessly lost man and the confident, successful businessman or businesswoman or whatever it is, what differentiates you is an attitude issue. Because as an attitude, even if you have a hundred dollars, instead of saving it all against the raining day which you do not know when it will come, you bring out 80 out of the hundred dollar out. That's 80 cents and you're ready to spend it to meet the expenditure for that day, believing tomorrow we take care of itself. Because the truth is we aren't in tomorrow yet. What about if you drop dead in the night? And the issue is, since you are willing to do that, you are storing less, if you ask me, that is genius, because when we are religious and we are going to the church, the Christian family, they will tell you, give 10% to the church as tithe, then pay offering. That is just 10%. What it means is that, are they saying, you cannot, if you give 10% to the church, 10% cannot survive your family and other issues. But what I say is the reverse, you give out 80% to meet everyday expenditure. Keeping only 20% for emergency and your upkeep on a daily basis. In that way, you make progress. So, because you are spending so much on promotion marketing and doing research, you're going to get income. Because no matter how long it takes, there will be income. Because you cannot compare that with a man who sits down somewhere, maybe hitting his head on the ground or even turning his legs upside down in prayer venerating maybe an invisible god or a creator that they expect him to fall from the sky and sub the shit you human shit that you created on planet earth i have not seen anywhere in the world if you go to all the different continents like in australia people made australia comfortable because australia used to be a place for condemned criminals before they got the aborigines, our ancestors were there. Black people. But what did they do? By the time British, the colonial master were carrying the prisoners and condemned people in London to that climb, they now begin to terrorize them and dehumanize them, which is all still part of the slavery agenda. And they were put in on, on that chains. And they were maltreated, of which even now, it's still ongoing, but not in that kind of dimension, because what we have now is mental slavery globally. So what are we saying? The attitude is the issue. So looking at taking this philosophy and looking at children, between the children who are beggars and homeless, or homeless boys and girls on the street. I haven't seen a homeless girl on the street. The only thing I've been seeing since I've been moving around from different country to country, I've seen mad women on the streets who have been abandoned by the society. But there are more mad men on the street than women. But in the street, you see homeless boys. In Nigeria, the northern part of Nigeria, I call them Alemajiri. And one thing that's peculiar about them, apart from wearing tattered clothes, some of them don't have shoes. They wear bare fitted. Another thing that's common with them, you see them carrying plates. What it means that the number one priority to them is food. So, but then, food is very important. Without food, how can they survive? So, food is priority. But that is common with the adult beggars, both in the north and southern Nigeria, whether in Lagos, whatever location you are, if you see beggars, even if the age of the group of begging setting, or beggars, colony of beggars, maybe the last one I looked at, the youngest person there was like maybe 50 years old, but there were people who were over 80 there. And notice the same thing, they had one thing in common with the children beggar. They were all carrying plates. But the only thing I noticed that is different, while the children were excited, having fun, playing one of the cans of soft drink, while the others were playing 
another plastic container for water. They were having fun and they were excited about everything. They had no, no stress or no serious containers because to them, they had to be happy. And in, in fact, you see the joy of the pleasure of a new day's miracle. So we trust children, anything is possible. But the adult, what I notice is that they are serious containers. They were worried. Looking at their face without being told, you will know a thinking man, because they are thinking of so many things. Because I did not have the privilege of asking them what they were thinking about. Because if I ask them, I know, if I'd ask them, they would probably tell you how the problem is money. Then the other one is what would they eat? So the question is, if you worry so much, I will now ask you a very stupid question. Can worry change any reality? Does worry affect the universe? Then I will now begin to ask you another question. Is it prayer that solves problem? Because we are meant to believe, we have been indoctrinated right from birth in African climb because you either belong to the Christian religion or the Muslim religion or traditional worshipper or other forms of belief. But as we begin to get exposed, we now realize it is not only two or three religious beliefs there are in the world. In fact, there are infinite number of religious beliefs. People are even creating new ones every day. But in our clan, where everywhere you turn to, all you see is a church or a mosque. They begin, when somebody say hallelujah, nobody say amen, they look at you as a demon. Or when somebody say Allah Kubaru and you ain't answering, there's a problem. And the question is this, within our setup, within the government, these same people are the people who they discriminate, they persecute, they victimize. If you aren't from their area, you aren't believing the same belief with them, which is all Middle East belief, they victimize you. They don't give you what you deserve. They don't allow you to stay in a position that you command because of your integrity, intelligence, and trust. So what do you do? An African continent, which is supposed to be lenders to the rest of the world, has become a beggar. Because what you have at the top, you have puppet government who don't even know their left or right. How do you expect a man who is a farmer to become a pilot? You put him on a plane and you tell him to pilot it, a Boris 737. Where is he going to go? You are going to end up crashing somewhere. You get lost in time and space, different geographical location. So that's the way it is.